Not fun. Not fun. How was fading the Orioles? Not fun. But I'll tell you this. The best way to learn in life is making mistakes. I made mistakes two years ago fading this team. I learned from it last year. But it's a new season, and I had to be reminded. Had to be reminded. I'm done. Done. Fading the Orioles. I have accepted. Also, fuck Patrick Sandoval. You saw my tweet this morning. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. I don't know why I think he's good. You did warn me. You did warn me. Angels fans said the Angels don't win this game. But I didn't ask for them to win this game. I just asked for them to cover the first five. You know what infuriates me? And I'm sure this is easier said than done. I got to try to throw a baseball. I got to try to throw a strike. Are there, are there, you know, there are those batting cages. I got to go to a batting cage when it gets warmer out. Are there places where you can pitch? That would be very fun. You know, like axe throwing. Oh, getting a corp call. Son of a bitch. Hold on. Hold on. Ah. Please hold. Corp call. Please hold.
Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. Thanks for your patience. Uh, let me tell you, there is nothing, uh, at least, as I'm talking about the piss on the O's, at least I get a corp call that hopefully means good good things for business. Um, yeah, token picks with a sub band. Appreciate you. Token 16 months. Bang. That's a long time. What is that? A year and four months? Sheesh. Um, we are, I'm excited though. I will say this. I, I love, I fucking love grinding baseball. I get my ass kicked. Uh, I have a good start to the season the past two years since I've been tracking. That's really all I can go off of everything else before that is irrelevant. Why the fuck would you even care? I start pretty well. I get my nuts kicked in, in the summer. Um, I went one and three yesterday. I think I had uh what did I do? I went in the over in the twins game. Um, I thought that was a pretty nasty contrarian over always the contrarian plays tend to hit early. Um, didn't get there. I faded the Orioles just because just because had to do it once just because on the first five did not get there. W Mike Trout though. Good start to the MVP season. Um, what was the other one I had? Oh, I took the, I took the Astros Yankees under first five under four and a half. And you know, I got to tell you, uh, what's up fellas. What's up, Unk? I do like the Unk. I will say that I do. I do. I'm cool with the Unk. Um, I got to fucking tell you, man, I don't know why I think Nestor Cortez is a good pitcher. I think I just need somebody to tell me he's not. Actually, people have told me he's not. I've chosen not to believe them. So shame on me. I deserved to lose that bet. He allowed three runs in the fucking first inning. Uh, could have been more, frankly. Could have been a lot more. DJ Natera's UCL if he pitches minus 1,000. Ooh, the Pirates win was electric. W, nice job. Uh, yes, uh, I didn't I didn't take uh, Mookie in anything this year. I had him MVP last year, but I do have Vlad, most home runs, of course. Go figure. Go figure. My most bet, according to Pickett, my most bet bets were Blue Jays team total over and Vladdy hit a home run last year. And they go over and he hits one in the very first game against my favorite team. Go figure. That's how sports gambling goes. Motherfucker. Um, uh, what is it? Nestor is going to be fine, but as of right now, he is on fade mode. Got you. Uh, Doink me last year. Should have stopped. Yep. I, I, my problem is I go all in on certain spots that, that, you know, fucking, I think I, I think I actually had it. I was very, doing very well last year. And then I got down to about like plus three units. And I said, you know what? I'm done for the year. And then glass now pitched in the playoffs. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Not glass. Now I think Eflin pitched in the playoffs and I fucking hammered Eflin. Uh, not a, not a, you know, a great couple innings by Eflin. Um, actually not a couple. I think he was good through five. I don't know why they didn't pull him. I don't know why they didn't pull him. I mean, things got out of control and, uh, what are you going to do? Anyways, it's neither here nor there. Although I like recapping. I do like recapping. I love recapping MLB the most. Um, but I hope you had a good start to the year. I, I love betting baseball and I'm very much looking forward to getting into it. Uh, we had a, uh, we're going to do a home run parlay and a giveaway almost every day. Until we're out in the streets eating ramen. But uh, got there nice and early. Love to see that with a fucking Royce Lewis homer. I hope, I hope Royce Lewis is okay. I really do. I hope Royce Lewis is okay. You don't want to see injuries this early. I hope Justin Steele is okay. You don't want to see injuries ever. You know what I mean? But like the first game, hamstrings, none of that's good. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, I was going to uh, address one more comment. Um, mono logo every time MLB stream fan in the O's. I don't even know what that means. Uh, the Angels are a very bad team. They are bad. The bet online boost already paid out. Which one was that? Was that raised to go to the fucking playoffs? Uh, pace for 0 and 162. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna leave you with this. I'm going to end it with this. DJ, you told me in DM you were going to double down on Detmer's day against the O's after double down, but at least have to hear me out tomorrow. Fine. But I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want to. I don't want to. I think I'm done fading the Orioles. There was legitimately a, a, a moment in time last year. Not kidding. I invested on the Rays very heavily last year, as I'm sure you already know, and I'll shut the fuck up about it, but you have to repeat yourself because new people are always watching, so they want to understand the context. There was a time last year when the Rays were playing baseball and got out to their great start. You're going to laugh at me, but I'm an honest guy, and I got to tell you the truth. There was a very, very, very small sliver of me that thought the Rays were going to win 140 games. I, I, I just didn't know who was going to beat this team, you know, and then the injuries happened. But even still, if, if they if they got injured, you know, or if they didn't get injured, they probably would have won like 110, 120. Um, DJ, do you have any eggs today? Seamock just finished him. 
I'm trying to be respectful to the people that watch the stream and don't like watching me eat. You know, they do have to keep in mind, I fucking, I don't do this full time. I don't really get paid to do this. I have a job. I have a fucking wife. I have a dog. I have shit to do. So I do try to get my my food in when I can. I got to eat because I've, I've skipped breakfast before and talking and engaging with 100 people is exhausting. So I got to have my food or else I fade. You know, I got to fade. Uh, you know, you want to DJ. No, I don't. I don't want to. That's what you get. Yep. Raise wind turtle over. It's going to be, a, I'm trying not to overreact. I'm trying not to overreact. I'm not trying not to be a prisoner of the moment. I'm just going to tell you right now. I, 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 I don't have a good feeling. I don't have a good feeling. But, you know, I texted Javon. He said, uh, he said, Barrios always owns us. Fine. Whatever. Um, you know, on the bright side, I said emotional hedge. I have, ba- I have, uh, I have, I have Barrios over 11 wins for two units. So that's one, I guess. Um, Bassett's going today though. Uh, and you know what? Before we talk baseball, I'm going to have Phil Zutley on, W Ball Knower Phil's. Uh, let me send him the link before I forget. I want to talk Sweet 16. All right. So everybody lock in. Let's talk Sweet 16. Good morning. I see we got 55 of you in here on Twitch. W Squad Pod, by the way. The Squad Pod is 12 and 4. And you know what? It hasn't lost since I stopped making a graphic. Maybe I just stopped making graphics. I'll post the graphic, but not what's on it. 12 and 4. Let's fucking go. Raise Decimate Kikuchi. All right, W's. Uh, could be Randy Day. Oh, I signed up for RotoWire. I subscribed to RotoWire. It's seven seven dollars a month. I was on it this morning. It was great. Hey, where's my post coffee uh, shit gang at? WC Fist from Twitter. Love that. Thanks for hopping in the Twitch and for subscribing. Um, okay, let's uh, let's rock and roll here. Send uh, send Phil's the link. Um, boom, and let me do the old retweet. And let's talk some fucking uh, basketball. So last night's games were between last night and today. Today's actually my favorite slate. So I made a, a, a deal with my wife. I said last night, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, drown you in sports. You know, you have to have a balance. And my wife loves this shit. Don't get me wrong; she's super cool. But I take initiative. I say I'm not gonna drown you. Last night was not the night I really cared to watch the games. Tonight is the night, is the night of love. Together forever and ever and ever. Tonight is the night. That just came to me. Um, tonight is the night that I want to watch the games. Tonight is the night that I want to be glued to the TV. Now, granted, can I stay up? I don't know. I was in bed last night at 9.15. Not even kidding. I was exhausted, though. I'd been up since fucking... 5 30 doing the newsletter. I had an 8 45 show. I was I was very, very busy. Today, not so much. Today is is foot off the pedal, uh, corp work from the from the computer, not in the office. So I'll be a little bit more rested. Uh talking sweet 16 now. All caps, exclamation point. W's. All right, good morning. So we got 70 people in here on the Twitch. You guys want to rock and roll. I want to rock and roll. Let's fucking do it. I don't have the speaker. I don't know why I just got high pitched like that. Don't have the speaker. I don't know where my fucking speaker is. Son of a bitch. Give me a drink. I was going to play some tunes. I'm feeling pretty good today. Feeling pretty good. Been going to the sauna. I am in, I am deflating. I am deflating. I don't know how much weight I've lost. I got up to 203 on the scale. 203. Okay. I did see 205, but that was after I ate, so I'm not counting that. There might have been some stuff in my pockets too. I don't know. Um, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Let's get the board up. Let's get the motherfucking board up. Oh, let's see. Sausage, McGriddle, and strawberry banana. Yum. Yum. Uh, I threw some coconut yogurt in. By the way, yogurt's not that healthy for you. It's kind of a myth. Orange juice and yogurt, not that healthy for you. Greg always told me that. And Greg's right. Sugar, carbs, whatever. But I did do I do two uh, tablespoons of coconut yogurt, uh, blueberries, and uh, some granola. Granola is also not that good for you, but it makes it delicious. That was my breakfast. Uh, then I went to the gym, walked the dog, did some corpse shit, uh, and I got hungry again. So I had two eggs. That's what I'm at right now. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna make a. I'm making. I'm making dinner tonight. I'm on dinner duty. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna make a steak with a loaded baked potato. My wife loves baked potatoes, um, and uh, maybe some asparagus. You know what I mean? Maybe some asparagus. So, anyways, let's uh, let's get into it. Yogurt is good for people with gut problems. Fair enough. DJ. My wife and I just put in our first ever offer on a house. Good luck. Good luck. Um, I hope that it's not overly competitive. But uh, but the market is crazy. It's picking up here in New York. It's it's a grind. Uh, being a real estate agent is a fucking grind. But it's picking up here. Getting some buyers, getting some sellers. It's interesting. Uh, w. Meal. 
What's up, Jabba Bash? I don't feel like I haven't seen your name very often. Are you a first-time chatter? No. Uh, but anyways, welcome. Okay. Jake Jack has already contributed. Look at this. He says, Zags, Duke, Tennessee. Well, I hope you're right about I hope you're right about one of those. Let's get into it. Uh, weight only matters in the morning. No, you know what? It only matters in the summer, and it's about to get hot. All right? Look, I can wear these puffy sweaters. I love it. I love it. I thrive in the winter. I put a fucking sweater and a coat on, and you cannot tell that I got fucking hips like, I don't know, who's kind of thick? Who's kind of thick? Who's like, who's kind of thick? I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't want to get canceled. One time I compared my card to uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal and somebody commented. It was like, do we really have to objectify women? I'm like, oh my God, come on, bro. Anyways, let's get into it. All right. Uh, I got the board up right here. I got the board up right here. Rafi Devers, dude. Devers is a dog. <laughs> it's very funny. Um, okay, let's talk about it. Yeah, Devers is a dog. You know, I saw uh, some smart people on, no, not quite Lizzo. W Nutbuster, by the way, holding me accountable and doing the squad pod, baby. Came through. Let's go. JLo, I don't know. JLo's like tight, dude. Betting hop from Twitter. JLo is tight. Any YouTubers on here? Anybody watch from YouTube? Who's at the office right now being corp? I know you're at your cubicle with your AirPod in, fucking smacking that keyboard away, working hard for the money. Oh, that is a good one. Hillary Duff is a babe you know who w Go, gremlin gob w corp right here yep red tube what's up xander corp gang you know who i had a fucking massive crush on a massive crush on underrated jennifer love hewitt you ever seen uh can't hardly wait you ever seen can't hardly wait great movie by the way brennan fraser yeah w and c no man jennifer love hewitt OG, low-key, underrated, babe. Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Uh, young Nancy. Uh, I heard she had some knockers. Uh, and who? Corp on Good Friday has to be a sit. Yeah, you know, my family's religious. I'm not super religious. They oh, they get they go crazy for Easter. I don't even remember when Easter is. I guess it's Sunday. They used to ask me, they're like, are you flying home for Easter? I'm like, am I flying home for Easter? No. W Easter, though. All right, W Easter, W Jesus, whatever, W religion, whatever you practice, I don't judge. Whatever makes you happy, that's what life is about, pursuit of happiness, all right? Whatever, like I told my dad uh, on his fourth marriage, I said, if, if you're happy, I'm happy. Do you know what I mean? All right, let's get into it, okay? Uh, here's the board. Here's the board for you. W day off in actuality. Yes, she was in Boy Meets World. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, by the way, the Nickelodeon documentary, I just finished it. Pretty fucked up. Okay. Here's the board for you. Let's talk Marquette and NC State. Where are the splits in this game? Oh, you son of a bitch. VEASAN always. They love. I'll tell you right now. They love logging me out. Love it. My account. I'm already logged in. Oh, you son of a bitch. You got to be kidding me. Okay, I think I'm in now. Betting. Betting. Here we go. Betting splits. So, okay, last night, here we go. They're up. I know you guys might not care about this. I like to look at them. And let's also take a look at uh, the odds according to Action Network. I feel like they're getting a little bit more accurate than uh, than covers. Is NC State a trendy dog? Well, last night we had Clemson. They were a bit of a trendy dog. They came through. Now, were they trendy in terms of winning outright? I don't think so. Uh, they came through RIP to Arizona. And then who else did we have? We had uh, we had UConn destroy San Diego State. I tried to get San Diego State in the first half. Thought it would be a little bit of a game. And then UConn would pull away. Um, didn't get there. There was, uh, I think they were it was six and a half. They were down by six. Cam Spencer hits a wide open three fucking with 30 seconds left. RIP. Um, and then let's see. We had Bama take down UNC. That was the interesting one because I said, I thought I'd be on an island with Alabama, and then I was I thought I was shocked by how much Alabama love there was all over Twitter. Um, that was okay, though. I didn't get to the window or, or come around to playing UNC. Did go with the over. That was a squad pod. We got there. Got a little scary. Got a little hairy. I got to tell you, though, Armando Baycott missing dunks. Caleb Love with his threes. I am so, I'm so happy we don't have to watch these guys play basketball anymore. I am not a Caleb Love guy. Armando Baycott, I really thought I liked him two years ago. I don't know what's up with this guy. I know he's a monster on the boards. I get it. But, like, you can't be missing dunks in the Sweet 16. You fucking can't. Anyways. Uh, and then we had um, 
Wait, Illinois take down Iowa State. I, I thought about coming around. A lot of smart people. Listen, I'm going to tell you. A lot of smart people told me it was going to be Iowa State. Not naming names, and I'm not even. I'm not even shaming anybody. You might. You might have maybe been on the right side. Iowa State was off yesterday, but I don't disrespect Illinois. I haven't. I shan't. I shan't respect, disrespect Illinois. I've respected them. I wanted to take them to win it all, and I'm, I'm such a bitch. They're going to be my Vegas Knights this year. When I went Stars instead of the Knights, watch. I went Arizona instead of Illinois, watch. Are they going to be Gonz- or, uh, UConn? Probably not, but you never know. You never know. Can you uh, pick play after live? My Can you pick play after the live? My lunch break is over. Do you now understand why Mike Palm said what he said? Stop it. Stop it. Bro, I have been hearing people, bookmakers, say that a very long time. And let me tell you, I've been on that side, the opposite side of them saying, oh, we we haven't gotten any bets on that. It does not work out well. You can, You all can miss me. I'm all down with a conspiracy. I'm all down for manipulation. I'm all down for fucking paranoia. Miss me with the Mike Palm and Circa being being fuckers. Miss me. Miss me. Uh, Sharp Money was, yes, of course, of course, I understand that. But people are saying, oh, they're only saying that because blah, 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 blah. That's the legitimate truth. But no, I get your point. There was other people on there that were kind of saying like, oh, they're just saying that to dupe you or something like that. It's, it's, I think they're not, I don't think they're bullshitting. Put it that way. They're not lying. They're not making things up. They're they're. I think they're telling it like it is. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. It's already 1127. I don't know what happened. Uh, yes, I agree with you. Circa is absolutely the sharpest book because I think they 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 don't they don't have the tightest limits. They have the, the biggest limits and they welcome all action. All right. I know Phil Zotley is going to hop in here. We're going to talk ball, but let's run through the CBB board. Um, let me tell him actually. Let me tell him a little bit later. Uh, let me tell him running a little behind. Uh, let me see. Running a little behind. Come in closer to 11 uh 45 if that's okay all right cool phil's utley phil's utley is going to come in to talk mlb looking forward to it uh phil's is a w ball knower okay that's it for yesterday um i respect illinois but let's talk today all i'm going to tell you is this i want nc state to keep playing basketball i want nc state to keep playing basketball are they a trendy dog maybe Am I fading trendy dogs? Not this tournament. No, not fading trendy dogs in this tournament. Doesn't matter. Things are changing. You got to evolve. You got to adapt. I am not going to blindly step up and put my money against trendy dogs because trendy dogs are hitting. Chalk is hitting. It's crazy. I think you just got to go with, if you're making a bet, you got to go with what you think. What you think between this matchup and these teams and you know what? I unfortunately, as much as I want NC State to continue playing basketball, I don't think they're going to do what Clemson just did, unfortunately. I think Marquette with Kolick back is a problem. That's what I think. Total is 150 and a half according to 151 and a half. Uh, I'm sorry, according to covers. 150 and a half up to 151 and a half. Let's see what the splits are in this game. It's a very public over and sharp over. Makes perfect sense to me. You know, the tickets are kind of split. Money's kind of split. You got money coming in on the dog money line. I can't blame them. Um, let's see here. It's at seven on uh, DraftKings. Let's see what the total's doing. Uh, yep, it did move a full point. Um, still pretty flat at uh, DraftKings. It did move a court, uh, over at FanDuel. I talked about this game with mid-major Matt. Yep, this journey, Ben, you got to trust the eye test. Concur. Absolutely concur. Uh, I want NC State to win as well. I'm happy Illinois won. Wh- uh, why would that be, Chewy? Are you uh, – you don't happen to be a Chicago fan, are you? Chicago – is Chicago in Illinois? Maybe that's why you're in Illinois. We fucking know, Chewy, you hometown bias. Uh, first time chatter, what's up, uh, Sharp Square CG? I want NC State to win as well. Welcome to the stream. Um, interesting thing. Last night was two of the teams with two of the best guards in Davis and Love. Both lost. That is interesting. So are we saying it's not a guards game? It's not a guards tournament. Maybe it's a big man tournament. You got Klingon. You got Edie. You got uh, fucking, uh, uh, what's his name? Why am I blanking? 
DJ uh, Burns. I mean, I have the show. We know. Uh, I still always love, uh, yeah, Kofi Cockburn. I like that guy too. I do not have a play in this game. Um, if I had to give you something, it would be my instinct. Uh, it, it would be my bias and my fandom of the game and of, of DJ Burns and wanting NC State to continue playing. And, I mean, if you watch NC State, I think they're playing some pretty good ball. It's kind of like Clemson. I don't think it's fluky. I don't think it's fluky. Have I watched every second of NC State playing this tournament? No, I have not. But I faded him with Texas Tech. That wasn't a game from the fucking tip. That wasn't a game. So I like what I'm seeing from NC State. I hope they keep it competitive. But Marquette is that team, just like Creighton. Can't get on the right side of I'm not going to try to now. Um, great question. We'll get there. Saying Caleb Love is the best guard is certainly a sentence with words. Yeah, right, right. 10 unit max on NC State to go the distance. Oh, God, good luck. Uh, okay, let's talk Purdue Gonzaga. This is the game I am looking forward to watching the most. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm very much looking forward to watching Duke Houston because I am invested in Duke, but I'm also not as intrigued by that game because I know that there's a chance Houston might fuck them up. Purdue Houston at 739 is the game I want to watch because I can't stand Purdue. I'm so sick of them, but after watching them and having money on Utah State, I don't know who's going to beat them. And then on the flip side, I watched Gonzaga in Kansas, and I thought that first half of Gonzaga, Kansas was the best first half of basketball I've seen in the tournament. But Gonzaga, start to fin from start to finish in that game, looked awesome. They are cohesive. They're playing well. Maybe it's maybe it's credit to Mark Few. Maybe it's credit to Nembhard. I don't even know that I'm that big of a Nembhard guy. I'm really not. I don't know that I dislike him as much as I'm starting to let, dislike Caleb Love. That motherfucker sometimes is just brain dead. But I don't know whether to blame him or blame the coaching there. Like, dude, stop shooting threes. But anyways... Gonzaga's really going to struggle on defense uh, versus to Purdue. So, so this is what I wanted to ask you. Really? I like the under in this game. I like the under. I think this is going to be a tight fucking game. I think it's going to be a battle. So the spread on this, according to Action Network, uh, if you're just tuning in, by the way, good morning. I see we got 90 on Twitch. Pandemic with a sub bank, 15 month. Appreciate you, Token. Oh, I already gave Token his flowers. Thank you, Token, for the uh, for the support. Everybody tuning in. We're talking Sweet 16. Then we're going to talk baseball with Phil Zutley. <sighs> Let's look at the line. Let's look at the line. W Squad Pod, thank you again, Nutbuster. Why does everyone hate Purdue and Edie so much? People act like Edie's. No, it's – I'll tell you why, big fella. I'll tell you why. Really, it's nothing to do with Edie himself. He's a big dude, and he's actually very good at basketball. It's the way he's officiated. It's just frustrating. Because he's got he's got seven inches on everybody. What the fuck are you supposed to do? I mean, Utah State having six fouls in the first five minutes of the game, and then it's a free throw contest. It's not fun. I don't like watching that kind of basketball. I'm sorry. Uh, also, how bad were those refs in the Clemson Arizona game? My God, couldn't do anything. And shame on Arizona for not even taking advantage of being in the bonus with 12 minutes left. Um, the key part of the game is going to be uh, panic. Fouling Edie. Uh, he's going to get his, and if they let him um, basket every now and then, stay out of foul trouble. Any thought of being able to battle in the paint with Edie? On, I, I don't know. I don't know why you you got so much shit for that Edie tweet, but there's 10 minutes. Here. I don't either, to be honest with you. I don't either, because I, I think people assume that I'm just an Edie hater, and it's really hard for people to understand words. And I get it. I'm not a very smart guy, but I think it's comprehension. Not an Edie hater. Hate the way he's officiated. Uh, where is Budman and Dig Dad when, when I need them? Gonzaga was struggling to guard Klingon when they faced UConn. Mm. Okay, I see what you're saying. Uh, hype train level one. What's up? Okay, let's get back to it. Let's get back to it before we talk baseball here. Uh, Gonzaga, is, I'm sorry, Purdue is up to five, five and a half at FanDuel. If you look at the splits here, let's see. We've got, according to DraftKings, we've got some more bets and money on Purdue moving that up a little bit. Um, you do, you're going to have the low tickets, higher dollars on every dog because everybody wants to play a plus price in March and I can't blame them. Um, look, end of the day. Oh, I want to look at the total. So the total is 68% of the bets on the over 64% of the money. And according to action, let's see what this total is doing. 154. It's only up half a point. 
It's only up half a point, 154 to 154 and a half. It is 155 at DraftKings. I kind of like this under. I really do. I think this is going to be a tight, tense battle. Purdue just facing Utah State. I, I watched that game. Utah State is not good. Shame on me for falling into it. Utah State is not good. Purdue had it easy, easy. I just don't think they get easy. I don't think they get. I think the Gonzaga defense is actually pretty solid, and I think Kansas just went on a nice little run there in that first half where they couldn't miss. They made like eight shots in a row. They were making everything, but Gonzaga clamped down and clamped up. Uh, we will get there. We're not on baseball yet. Um, uh, okay. That loss to Wisconsin was the best thing that happened to Purdue. Good point. Really good point. Special K really good point. I like the over because the Zags know they have to speed the game up to limit ease effect in the Zags. Um, uh, any ball knowers, any thoughts to this? It's actually a pretty fucking good counterpoint. See, we got a hundred in here on Twitch. Good morning, everybody. Um, fuck. That's a pretty good point. I know. I agree. I'm worried about uh, boards in that game. If Zag shots aren't falling, I think they can compete. Yeah, good point. Look at that. Look at these. Look at these compliments. Love it in here. Uh, I like the Zags. Okay, you taking the points or are you going for the jugular? If I gets in foul trouble early, they're in trouble. Yeah. So that was the problem. I was hoping the officials weren't going to get Lede in uh, in foul trouble against uh, UConn early, and he did. He got he got two soft ones. I don't know that it was so much that it was so early, but I mean the the fouling was so soft. But anyways, let's keep moving. Um, I like under this game. Am I going to get there? Maybe. All my plays, by the way, are going to be half units because I'm getting. I, I have been cold as ice. Everything's out there on Action Network. You can see how I'm doing. I I, I am getting my ass kicked. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's the coldest run of my life because that would be silly. I've been gambling for 18 years. I've probably been colder. Shit happens. What are you going to do? All right. But for whatever, for God, I, I'm, I'm assuming most of you don't tell me, which is great. Certainly don't start now. Uh, let me figure it out. I'm going half units until I can read the board better. I think I'm going to go under. I think I'm going to go under. More possessions means more foul eating juices. Yep. Okay. All right, uh, guys. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about Duke Houston. <sighs> I watched Duke play in person twice. I saw him against Vermont, and I saw him dismantle uh, JMU. I think that has more to say about Jam uh, Vermont and JMU than it does about Duke. I'm going to listen to the sharps, but here is the one thing I want to point out. I want to I want to make this pretty fucking clear. And again, I am not shaming anybody. I am not naming names. I think there are people who know way more about well everything, but about college basketball. I do not I don't get to watch as much sports as I'd like to anymore. That's just kind of what happens when you get old and you get fucking married and boring and you go to bed at 9:30. Unfortunately, I trust the ball knowers in here. Maybe you're younger, maybe you're single, it doesn't matter. Enjoy your life. I'm not judging you. I'm not saying I'm better than you, but you get you have an advantage of watching these teams more than me. If you're going to tell me that there is a matchup advantage to a team and I don't really strongly love a bet, I'm not going to force the wager and I'm going to respect it. A lot of people had really good reasons to like Iowa State last night. At the same time, sharp money was hammering Illinois. I actually think Illinois was all both sharp and a little square. Okay. Not saying that necessarily matters. I'm just calling it like it is. And they still came through. Bad shooting night for Illinois, for Iowa State. Illinois to me is fucking legit. Legit. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. Those same really smart people are telling me that Houston is going to fuck Duke up. Do I think they're wrong? No. Do I hope they're wrong? Yes. Why? Because, again, I have Duke to win it all. It's my last remaining ticket. Oh, I spite that Marquette, but that doesn't count. Here's where I'm at with this game. I remember watching Duke. Probably watched him about four times over the course of the season. Didn't like him once. Even in games where I bet them and won at Virginia Tech. I think they're like minus six or something. They covered. I don't like Duke. They are soft. McCain can ball. Proctor can ball. Filipowski is a bitch. And I do not like Roach. I do not like Roach. Duke had some guy come off the bench. I forget his last name. He had like three steals in the first couple plays that he made. But then he had like two turnovers. It's like he couldn't fucking dribble. He was dribbling like Jalen Brown. I'm like, dude, get it together. Collect, get, get composed. 
I don't like these guys. So I think the fact that Houston just blew a almost blew a lead and lost to AM, gave up 45 free throws. I think Houston's like, whew, we fucked around and we almost found out. Now we're gonna clamp down, tighten up, tighten up. So I I I agree with these people, but also I hope they're wrong. I hope they're wrong because I hope I, I hate to say this, I don't want you to lose money, but again, I have Duke, so I want Duke to advance, obviously. I hope this is Iowa State 2.0. And I know my guy fucking Beav. I'm a big shady Beav guy. I saw he's got a five-unit max on Houston. Beav, I'm sorry. I hope you're wrong. Do I think you're wrong? No. Do I think Houston's the right side? Fair enough. But also the two teams I've watched the least in, in this season are Iowa State and Houston. So I don't know enough about them. I don't know enough about them. And I'm not going to get there. I'm not going to get there. I think it could be I think it could be a good defensive battle. I would maybe go first half under. But that's it. Let's look at the splits in this game while we're at it. We'll talk one more game, and then we'll go to um, – uh, <laughs> you like that, right? Uh, a and is way harder matchup for Houston than Duke is. Interesting. Dude, yeah, maybe. Maybe Houston coach is better, uh, is better than – I don't care. Well, he's certainly better than Schneider. Yeah, I respect Kelvin Sampson. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, tickets are split. The sharp money's on Houston. Let's see what's going on with the line. That's the total for you, 133 up to 134 and a half. Uh, and you've got a half a point move. You've got a half a point move. I got one question for you because again, that's what we do with the board review, right? We're not, we don't, we don't give out locks and winners, et cetera. I hope we, I hope we find winning bets, obviously, but we look at all facets. We factor everything and we check ourselves before making the bet. I have one question. Do you think the books are respecting Duke? By not by only moving this half a point. Do you think that's a little bit of respect to Duke? I just think that basically, I guess what I'm saying is this money moved Illinois from three and a half to one and a half. There was a legit liability there. And I do think that they really wanted Iowa State action. You think they really want Duke action? Neutral site game line seems fair. I would make this seven or eight at Houston. Fair enough. So Houston would definitely be favored in Camden, right? For what it's worth, my gut feeling as a square Nazi will know where that watch attorney got to be Houston. Fair enough. Uh, Dudes are, are overvalued because of the name, in my opinion. Uh, Toki Toki, good point. Good point. Uh, play the over in the Duke Houston game. I do like what I saw from Duke's offense, but at the end of the day, I got to remember it's one guy scored like 40 points. Duke, like the Yankees, always going to get it. Yep. Uh, definitely. Duke is a stable of sports. Yep. Fair enough. All good points. Okay. Let's move on to the last game. Uh, recap for you. I think Marquette wins by 14. I have no lean on the total. I hope NC State wins. Go DJ Burns. I like the under in Gonzaga. I think Purdue wins. I don't know if they cover. I do think they win. But my gut says, my gut says this is like a 76 68 game. That's what I think. 76 68 Purdue against Gonzaga. And I think it stays under. I like the under. Um, Houston Duke, I'm just going to hope it's Duke. Not going to play it. This is where I think I'm getting fucking duped because I think I really like Tennessee. Let's talk. Let's, I want all angles and reads on Creighton, Tennessee. Chat, you guys are buzzing today, by the way. W's, I love it. Uh, interesting, this looking at advanced at Licks beginning of March, Duke would be favored. That is interesting. If they call the Tiki Tech chick, then Duke has a chance. Fair enough. I think Houston going to be cautious defensively. Before. Oh, ooh. That's a good angle. Parasm. That's a good angle. I, I didn't even think about that. I think that's a really good angle. Um, okay, what are you guys saying here? Uh, the Cougar game is all about aggression. They live and die by it. Yeah, fair enough. Good counterpoint. Uh, correct. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll do it, <laughs> dude. If I can, if I can find it on Fanduel, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Uh, okay. Good point. Duke is not winning this game. Freeze. You sound mighty confident. You sound mighty confident. But I agree. I don't think they are either. Okay. Anyways, last game. Can I please get Creighton and Tennessee reads? I, I think ten Creighton is soft. But you got to remember, I think this because they burned me last year in the Big East tournament when I was there watching them and put five units on them to beat fucking Xavier or somebody. 
and they looked drunk. I'm telling you, I don't know what happened in that game. Either they lost it on purpose or they were out at fucking a strip club the entire night. Anyways, people started to love Creighton last year. They lost San Diego State. Maybe they shouldn't have. I don't know. Now they just beat Oregon. All the homies were on Oregon. I still think that was the right side. My heart breaks for you, honestly. Creighton had a terrible shooting day. And Tennessee had a terrible shooting day. So you know what I want to back? I think I want to back the over. Maybe that, maybe that logic makes sense, but I don't care. You know, logic that makes sense is, is hitting at an insane rate, you know? So, I, but in terms of a side, I really like Tennessee. I don't think Creighton is that good. But fuck me, do I feel like I'm getting duped. Uh, so as a Big East, so as a Big East fan, the whole conference besides UConn doesn't play defense. That leans into my over, doesn't it? Uh, Nick Bibbick. I don't know that I've seen your name before. It doesn't say first time chatter though, but anyways, welcome. Tennessee getting slammed with bets and lines and budging. Good point. Good point. Uh, Big Ball Brazy, what's up? I actually like the over your your uh, your right uh, Thrasher. That's the wrong your. Um, apostrophe R E, no big deal. Fuck the Orioles. Uh, NC State is one of the most bet teams at MGM. Go Marquette. Fair enough. Uh, if you say Creighton sucks and it's Tennessee, yeah, it's really loud. Sorry, my wife is on a corp call. Yes, not Buster. That's the problem. Can't you see it now? Squares table. DJ. Add it. Fork. Knife. Going to dig in, whoop, food gets taken. Every time I make a square bet, that's what happens. Every time. <sighs> I'm getting duped. Yep. W grammar. Yep. Uh, had to add uh, fuck the Oriole. Did I say that? I'm sorry. Um, w enthusiasm. Yep. <laughs> How is Tennessee's three-point defense Creighton lives off the free? Uh, you know what? I don't know. Need somebody smarter than me to, to, to answer that question. But mother of shit, guy. I I want to slam Tennessee money line. I really do. But I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I think I'm going to have one under and one over. The old rusty trombone reach around. I don't don't I don't even know what I just said. Um let's look at the bets here. Then you look at the bets. You don't like to see this. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let the, the splits dictate my bet. I'm really not going to. The old dick twist. Yep, but good with Vegas. There we go. By the way, I'm gonna just say something. The this number and these splits look almost identical to what game last night. Class, come on, class, hit me with it. Hit me with it. Hit me with it. What game do these splits look almost identical to? In this Duke Houston total. Sorry to backtrack. The number and the splits. Who knows it? Who? Come on. Somebody's got to know it. No, negative, 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 negative. Come on, try again. Almost identical. No, you guys, Jesus Christ. Yes, gelato. It was 34 and a half. And I wanted to take the over. Thankfully, I got talked off. Shout out mid-major Matt. Bets and money were on it. Maybe it was more like 86% of the money, 77% of the bets, something like that. That shit looked like it was soaring over, and it stayed under. Miraculous. Miraculous. Um, all right. Anyways, Creighton, 77% of the bets on the over. Look at that. Reverse splits. That is interesting to me. Low tickets, higher dollars on the under, uh, which is interesting. But the line is moving over. So according to Action Network, let's go to the total. We've got, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did this total open 148 and a half? Does anybody know if that's accurate? Holy shit. You guys see this right here? Holy shit. This total dropped four and a half points. Four and a half points. Can somebody double check that? Go to wager talk. No, it's not right. I don't think it's right either. I don't know if it's right. I'm not a professional. I don't look at these numbers when it starts. It started at 142, 143. Okay. Action Network's bugging then. That sounds right to me. Okay. I don't know why Action that uh, says 148. 
What does cover say? Well, cover says 142, but you can't trust any of these motherfuckers. Maybe Wager Talk uh, would know. I just can't pull up Wager Talk because the website was built in like 1982. That's where I'm at, ladies and gentlemen. That's where I'm fucking at. Uh, let me see where Phil's is. All right, Phil's, I don't know if you're tuning in, but I'm ready to talk baseball whenever you are. Um, just to recap for you, I like the under. I'm sorry, I like the over. I guess I guess I'm squaring up big time with Tennessee. I think both teams' uh, shooting performances are better. Creighton was really bad. Tennessee was really bad. Dalton Connect was not very good. Defense clamped. But you know what? Texas kind of stinks. Um, Creighton escaped by the skin of their teeth. I think they shoot better. And you know, I, I said this about UConn. It was my one worry about fading UConn. Well, there's a lot of worries because they're UConn. But my bigger worry about fading UConn was when I watched them play Northwestern. They were up by 20-something points, and they weren't even making jumpers. No threes, no jump shots, nothing. Everything they were making was layups and dunks. They had a terrible shooting night, so I liked them to bounce back. So, I mean, the bounce back theory worked. They shot 60% in the first half or something crazy. Um, so that's where I'm at. Let's go NC State. That one's a heart, heart over the head. Uh, Gonzaga-Purdue, I'm probably going to play that under. Um Duke Houston, I'm gonna. It's probably gonna be a Duke team total under kind of night. If I had to bet it, but I'm gonna pull for Duke. Uh, Creighton, Tennessee, I would square up with Tennessee, but I can't do it because I can't eat the squares table and I can't get on the right side of Creighton. Like the over, like the over. So we'll see what happens. Um, all right. On that note, let's transition to baseball. Uh, as I said, a not a great day to uh, start to the baseball season. I was one and three, but I got some good. Uh, I learned some good lessons, and that's the best thing. You 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 got to learn from the mistakes. Nestor Cortez, I'm not betting on Nestor Cortez anymore. I'm not fading the Orioles anymore. Just did it for the vibes. Zero vibes. Actually, negative vibes. Never doing that again. Um, oh, I got the Padres. It's only I got with the Padres. I like the Padres. W. I had to face stake on that one. Sorry, stake. Um, so anyways, let's get into it. Oh, Phil's is in the queue. Phil's, good to see you. How are we? Hey, what's going on, man? All right. Well, I am. Uh, I'm very interested to, uh, or I'm very excited to talk baseball with you. Uh, it's been a long time coming. And uh, first and foremost, I know we didn't, didn't get to uh, talk futures quite as much. I do want to talk about today's board. Um, so maybe we'll do that first. How much time do you have, by the way? Yeah, I'm good on time. So okay. Maybe. So I'd love to maybe hear um, just maybe like a team or two that you're high or low on, because uh, you can always get. Um, in season bets and whatnot, maybe just see if you have any MVP or uh, or Cy Young plays. Um, did you did you start betting on baseball yesterday? And if so, how'd you do? Yeah, I did pretty good on props. I mean, the okay. only one I lost was Judge Under, but <laughs> it's a risky uh, take. I mean, it's always it's just he didn't have that great of a game, but he got like a double eight and whatever. I had some other good reads for that one. So, all right. Uh, by the way, if anybody's watching is not familiar with Phil's, uh, one of my favorite things about his betting style is he will take unders on some of the bigger names in baseball, which I, I admire because that takes balls. Um, all right. So, uh, first game on the slate is uh, are the Mets and the Brewers. And now, look, I'm not going to force any reads out of you if you don't like them. Um, so feel free to say if you if you want to pass or whatnot. It's 11:55, so we got about 30 minutes or so. Um, but I am. I don't know if you heard any of the pitches uh, the past couple of streams. I'm on the Mets this season. I took their over win total. Um, not so much that I like necessarily their their pieces or their rotation. I like their lineup a little bit, but it's kind of more so the team without any expectations or or a lot of pressure. I know Hazen was on and he said they might be sellers at the deadline and that would concern them. That's a legit legitimate red flag. But I wanted to back the Mets right out of the gate and, and do it day one. I thought about doing it team total. I thought about doing it on the money line. Um, the Brewers are a team I'm not super high on. But then I had P.O.D. Pete on, and he said he's going to take a stab at the Brewers to win the division. So he sees something there with the Brewers. I'm going to just sit and wait, I think. Uh, it looks like um, – actually, I was looking at covers. But I'm going to pull up uh, – action and just get an accurate uh yeah it looks like the mets are favored or it's a pick them favored at bet mgm and DraftKings, or it's a pick them do you think this is weird at all quintana against freddie peralta um and do you have a play in this game yeah the one play i was leaning at was i was looking at Kristen yellich under fantasy score oh he doesn't hit quintana well and he quintana's really good against lefties but 
the thing with the Brewers is usually they were an auto fade against a team against a lefty, but their lineup is really different this year. They have Torrio, which I put for rookie of the year. I have a bet on him. He's hitting leadoff. So he's their, he's their top prospect. He's the top five prospect in the game. And then they got Reese Hoskins from the Phillies. So he's hitting clean up. He kills lefties. And then you look at Adamas, he's hitting fists. So he might should have a bounce back here. They got they got Joey Ortiz from the Orioles, and he's a good prospect. And then they also signed Gary Sanchez. So their lineup is completely different against lefties. So I'm going to have to have to see how it goes early on. But usually they were auto fade against lefties, but they brought in a lot of different pieces this year. There's something you have to kind of monitor. You have to have to adjust on the fly. So. Okay. So – I think I guess I have a reason to have a little concern with the Brewers. I'm not going to go – I'm not going to fade them, but it's a team I'm going to keep an eye on. And if they start to, to to spiral or get on a little bit of a losing streak, I might just blindly lean into it, but not out of the gate. Um, so you're on Yelich under fantasy score. If you yeah, have – I'm played, not sure. I'm not probably not going to lock it in, but it's like a lean. For okay. Just for like an early action on my play. But Someone's, like I lucked, lucked, lucked into him more and it's like – he hits. He is going to on his pitch mix kind of well, fastball and sinker. So I was trying to go off on that. You're you're a Hoskins guy because he was a four, he's a Philly and you're a Phillies fan. Do you yeah. like his total, total basis today? I mean, it's kind of hard to tell. He hasn't seen live pitching for over a year, so it's like who knows what's going to happen for the Hoskins. He's a really patient hitter, so he gets a lot of walks. So I know a couple guys like uh, Quintana. He does have some uh, struggle issues. So I know. Couple of people like Hoskins for a walk, so that might be a cheeky play. Mm. But it's kind of hard to go for Hoskins because he hasn't faced live pitching for a year. But yeah, the lineup for this year, they might kill some lefties because they get brought into a lot of good pieces. So last two years, they were like an auto fade. Anytime a decent lefty was out there, you just fade the Brewers because they couldn't okay. hit lefties for shit. But this year is a little bit different. They have, they have some righties that could do some damage. So Okay. Good insight. Uh, I'm out completely on this game. The only thing I thought about doing too was uh, it was it's going to be very windy in New York. Uh, I think like gusts up to 30, 40 miles an hour. Um, but it's also really cold. I don't know if cold weather really benefits um, hitting. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you're on. It's like you like around June time. That's when the bats start heating up. So mm-hmm. I try to look for unders to start the year for for cold weather. And that I know you're like a huge Alonzo fan this year with the whole contract year and giving out the dogs for that. But I don't know. Sometimes we can get caught up with the contract year and they have a pressure. Remember we, we took Arias last year for Cy Young cause he had a contract year. He had a whole year. And now he's probably never going to pitch in the baby. <laughs> so, like, sometimes it kind of backfires like that. And I looked at the Mets lineup today and I don't like it for Pete because they have, they had Jeff McNeil hidden behind them. So if, Guys are on base. I'm not pitching the Pete. Like I'm walking, I'm walking Pete if the base is open. So that's that's the one thing that worries me with Alonso for RBIs because he doesn't have doesn't have good protection behind him at all. Like I'm not a big McNeil fan. Marte has been struggling. DJ Stewart's he's not up and down. I do like the bottom of the lineup. I do like Brady and I do. I'm a big Francisco Alvarez fan. Love him. I, I'm a big fan of him, a catcher wise. So I think if they move him to the cleanup hole, that would give Pete some more protection. But mm, he might he might be and like with the Brewers, like they have a really good pro plan. So I agree with Pete. They're like a worth a sprinkle for the division. But the thing with the Brewers is if they suck, they're gonna sell off some pieces. They're gonna they're gonna deal Devon Devin Williams, he's hurt, but they're probably gonna deal him. Like Hoskins is on like a cheap deal. If he has a bounce back year, they're gonna deal him. They're gonna deal with Adamas. Like they're gonna just deal off the players. So it's kind of hard though. You have something like that, you want to back them there, but then fade them in the year if they start selling off. Okay. All right. Good insight. Um, I respect all the takes and looks on the Brewers. I have decided that I'm gonna stay off this game, unfortunately, even though it's at 140, and I would love a little action. All right. Next game on the slate: Phillies and Braves. Another one that got postponed yesterday. Wheeler against Strider. Um, I am sure that everybody is going to be all over Strider and his K's. Uh, let's see if there is a more accurate line here. Uh, we are seeing the Braves go from 130 down to 125. So 
I guess maybe a little money um, hitting the Phillies seven and a half down to seven. Um, also, just to note on that Mets Brewers under it was seven and a half juice minus one fifteen. Now it's minus one twenty two. So, um, not really sure. Looks like both early games people are putting their money towards the under. Um, you got anything in this game? Yeah, I'm probably gonna back Strider in some way. I'm I'm trying to wait till a price fix foot out like his fantasy score because I think he really deals. Mm. People have kind of have like the notion that Strider struggles against the Phillies, but it's mainly only in the playoffs. So they hit him well in the playoffs when the pressure gets to Strider, but during the regular season he really dominates them. And then the main thing with Strider here, he's mainly a two pitch pitcher. Mainly just through fastball and slaughter, but this spring training. He added a curveball, so he could be dominant at the stretch when he adds a curveball and he just dominates them. So I'm probably going to look the back strider in some way, and I would probably lean the under because the weather is kind of bad in Philly, and you got arguably really the two best pitchers in the NL going against them, and you have probably two five bullpens in here, and they're both rested. And the thing with the Phillies here is they really struggle to begin the year. They don't really hit the ball well until around June, and they start heating up. So mm. they're a team that kind of struggles out the gate. So and they could have like the all the Braves. They want to get revenge from the playoffs, and the Phillies might have a little hangover after choking to the D back. So the thing with Strider here is he basically he's basically struggles with the home run ball. So so like they're probably going to pitch around Harper because Real Muto is hitting behind him, which I don't like. Protection wise, I'd rather have Cassiano's hitting cleanup. So they're probably going to pitch around Harper. So I'm probably going to back starter some way. I'm, I'm waiting to prospects puts out his fantasy score, but I don't mind his case if people are looking like that. It's going to be a core play, but I don't mind. He's the best strikeout pitcher in the league. He's adding a curveball. So who knows how they're going to hit that. But I would probably lean a low scoring game in here. And it's basically a pick em. It's probably going to come down to the bullpens at the end of the game. Uh, Strider complete game shutout worth a sprinkle. I mean, he's probably not going to go past six or seven innings because when the, when the thing with that is with strikeout pitchers, they throw a lot of pitches. So like you get a lot of K's, but you'll kind of work the count and they throw a lot of pitches. And sometimes Strider has control issues here with walks and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, uh, yeah. The, oh, by the way, on MGM, Ben MGM, if anybody doesn't know this, you can go to first five and you can play alt uh, total runs. So you can go, you can, if you want a one on zero game or something, you can do that at a plus price. W sell job. Yeah. Phil's is the goat. He fucking knows his shit. Um, all right, Phil's let's, uh, let's move to, uh, let's move to my team. Uh, I'm trying not to overreact here, but I, I don't, I'm just, I'm getting deja vu after one game of the Rays pathetic, uh, at bats, it was not a good day for Randy. It was really just a Yandy day. Uh, I mean, he, I think he was like three, three hits in his first three plate appearances, uh, not to mention a, a leadoff home run, which was excellent. We need Randy to bounce back. Uh, we need some guys to step up. I am, however, very excited about Aaron Savale. Uh, I liked the acquisition last year when we got him. Um, he's going to have to have a big year. He's got some big weight on his shoulders because he's our number two guy, given all the injuries. The Blue Jays, though, terrify me. Um, they are a team that I I don't know if this is accurate, by the way, 115 to 130. Or is that really what it is right now? I got I just got to see what this line is. 130, open 130. It's kind of staying 130, according to Action Network. Um, the Jays and Berrios kind of did what I expect them to do. Granted, I know it's one game out of 162, but I think they're going to get hits. I think they're going to score runs. And I think for the most part, their pitching is going to be okay enough, and they're going to be a good team. Um, the Rays have to – be a little bit more competitive than they were yesterday. Uh, I want to say, I want to believe that Savale shows up in his first day, uh, in his debut and pitches well. I'm not saying the M word. Everybody knows that's gone. That's done. And I'm not even going to say, I'm not even going to say that he pitches a gem. Maybe he gets some, maybe he gets some balls in play. Maybe there's some good defense. I don't know. But I like the under in the first five. As of right now, that's the only play I'm feeling very confident about, and I'm probably going to push the button on. Um, because at the same time, I think Bassett's pretty good. So I think this Rays lineup might not be that that great. Bassett's pretty good. Uh, I looked at his splits. I just signed up for RotoWire, by the way. I don't know if you ever use RotoWire for baseball. Maybe that's maybe nobody uses that, and I should be using something else. But I saw his he's he's 
much better at home than on the road. His ERA on the road is like four seven or something. At home, it was like two. Um, but I want to back back these pitchers and and back them early. So I'm liking the four and a half under minus one twenty minus one twenty five. I don't really know who wins the game. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, Rotowire is a good resource. I use it mainly just to look at bullpen usage. It tells you like it shows like in the red who pitched the last game. Yep. And it'll give you like a yellow thing. So basically that means they're probably not gonna pitch. So that's good for that. And it's good to double check the lineups for that. But I would probably agree with the under in some way. The thing with the Blue Jays, their lineup is very right handed heavy. So you, their best hitters are all right handed hitters. Mm. Look at Springer, Vlad, Bichette, Turner, high four hit hitters, they're all righties. And Savali is pretty good against righties, limiting them to that. So I'd probably lean under that way. And Bassett gets a lot of hate from people, but he's a solid pitcher. He's not going to like, he's probably going to go like six innings to give up like two or three runs. He's not a guy that gets destroyed a lot of times. Mm-hmm. He's a pretty consistent pitcher. But a lot of people don't like him, but just looking at the Rays lineup, like I saw Rand- Yandy doesn't have the best numbers against him. And Bassett does a good job against righties. He mainly gets destroyed by lefties. But Yandy, Ryan Randy has pretty good numbers against him from what I saw. So it might be like a Randy day. But the guy I like from in the Rays that Javon kind of mentioned is uh, Palacios. Richie Palacios. I might just kind of look on him, see if they have him for like a half total base or something like that. But he's a guy that did well in strength training here and Bassett struggles against lefties. Mm-hmm. So if I could find him for like a half total base, I just might sprinkle on that. But overall, I would lean, I would lean to the under because with the Rays, they lost a lot of pieces, at least early on. I mean, Wander was probably your best pure hitter and obviously he's never going to play again. Josh Lowe was the guy I love. And he's too. hurt. So, Me like, too. they have some struggle. And, like, you look at the bottom of the lineup, like, Siri, he's probably going to get a home run to go for Pinto. Like you said, you guys never had a good hidden catcher. And Pablo is the guy that's probably never going to hit. He's just a defensive player. So, the thing with the Rays is they have all these good prospects, but they're keeping them in the minors. It's like they have um, the one guy who's a top five prospect. And they have Christian Mee. Like, they need to bring up these guys and just let them play. Aranda was looking great, and he got hurt, unfortunately. Um, yeah. We need Aranda back. We need Lau back. I agree. I was I was looking. His line was 18 and a half for home runs, and that was probably going to be my biggest bet of the season. Uh was loving Lau coming into this year because I liked what I saw from him last year. Um, well, by the way, just real quick, Cam is money. W Subbank, 17-month or cap-wise. What's up? Let's, let's go Rockies. Um, I like what I'm hearing from you. You said you you said something that I wanted to talk about briefly. When I looked at Rotowire and I was looking at the lineups uh, stats against Bassett, the guy that jumped out was Randy. I think he's I think he's seen him eight times. Yeah. He's got three hits and a home run. Uh, nobody else had more than one hit, uh, if any. So it looks like Randy might be the guy to target for the Rays. And I just wanted to add to that. I didn't watch the game yesterday, but I was, uh, I love the MLB uh, app. I like listening. Is it, is it a weird take to say I almost like listening to baseball games than I like watching them on TV? I love it live. Nothing beats it live, but like baseball broadcasters are great. And I love the Rays guys. So anyways, I was listening to it and it just didn't sound like Randy's at bats were good. Like it was, and, and he he's had some pathetic at bats and I was like, Ooh, is this the Randy we're going to get out of the gate? It could be a slow start. But because of that, I guess what I'm getting at is could be a big mentally like, all right, a big bounce back game. Again, I know it's game two out of 162. So I would play. How would you play Randy? Would you play hits, bases, sprinkle a home run? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, he has good number against Bassett, but Bassett really does a good job against Freddie. So it kind of, to me, it kind of cancels out. But if I would probably lean to anything, it would probably be like hits, runs, and RBIs. Hits, runs, RBIs? Okay. But like the um, thing is, is like I hate Brandon Lowe. I don't know how you guys both. like. I don't know how he's hitting second. Like I think, I think Palacios would be a good second hitter, but who knows what they're gonna do that. For. Brandon Lau is unfortunately, I could be wrong about this. Uh, first time chatter. What's up, Braves? Chance birthday boy Olson goes yard. Okay, we'll get there in a second. Brandon Lau is a guy you know. I love when I when I cap sports. 
in anything. I love dog. I just love a guy like even if you don't you don't perform well statistically, like at least if you played your ass off, I'm good with it. You know, sometimes Siri would go 0 for 4 with four strikeouts, but he would get pissed off. Like I'm okay. Like I see that it bothers you. Brandon Lau, what infuriates me is he looks like he's wearing a diaper. And I'm not talking like just in his face. He looks like he's always about to cry. He doesn't look like he has any dog, but he also has statistically performed very well at times. And has he now he's also gone through really bad slumps, but there are some there are some times when he's been the Rays' most reliable hitter. So for whatever reason, I think Kevin Cash is just too glass half full on Brandon Lau. I probably would have already gotten rid of the guy. I don't even know what we could get trade value wise. I would I would have probably taken a ham sandwich at his lowest low, and who knows for his highest high. But I agree with you. To see him that high in the lineup is frustrating. Uh, and then I'm pretty sure his first at bat uh, yesterday was a strikeout looking, and I'm like, oh, here we go again. Again, trying not to overreact, but um, yeah, the Rays they might like. I know last year they came out and they started the year they were like what 13 and 0, and he thought they were going undefeated and shit. But I did. I thought that this might this might be the year where they struggle out the gate, but it might be a team that you can pick up later in the year and back them because they have a lot of good prospects. They should bring up a lot of their pitchers might come back later in the year. Like I'm yep. not sure about. Jane Boz and Todd Bradley was a guy I wanted to back. So, like, they might struggle out of the gate, but you can back him later. I will be backing Todd Bradley. If he wasn't hurt, I would have gotten, like, in the, the rotation, I would have probably sprinkled on him to be a strikeout leader. I will be playing, like, my Rays master classes last year, Rays team total, blah, 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 blah. It's going to be Taj K's uh, early and often whenever he's back. All right, we can move on. Enough Rays talk like that first five under. W came as money for the sub bang, um, but it will not – Go unnoticed that you uh, you stole my POD, but nice job, nice job. You stole it from right underneath me, so I can't POD that. I'll try to find something else. Maybe it'll be uh, Randy home run. All right, um, or Savale over K's. We'll see. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk Pirates and Marlins. I guess just briefly. I don't know that this matchup necessarily excites anybody. Um, I know Pete is down on the Marlins this year. Uh, he got uh, he got a nice zero and one start after they were up for most of the game yesterday against the Pirates. Martin Perez and AJ Puke going. Is there any bets that you'd place in this game, it's a total stay away from me. Well, like I told you about Martin Perez, he's always going to have weird <laughs> lines. So he always steals your coin. So, like, it's a lot different this year because he's on a horrible team, the Pirates. So, like, it's going to be different. Cause, wait, wait, wait. You, uh, you don't, aren't the Pirates kind of exciting this year? Like, people expect them to be fun and they've got some young guys. You think uh, they're going to be horrible? I mean, yeah, I mean, I know Ollie backed him and Keller got destroyed yesterday. So, like, he might be in shit already. So, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I like some of their young players, like Skeens and stuff like that. But I don't think they're a good team at all. Like, when you got much cut McCutcheon hitting third, like, that's not going to work out. I'm not a big Brian Hayes fan. Like, I'm not a, I only guy I like on their team is so Neil Cruz. Like, that's the only guy I can back. So. Fair enough. Uh, so, no plays in this game. Yeah, I mean, one guy I want to see how they do is AJ Puck. He was a top prospect. He was like a closer, but now they're making him into a starter. So he's a guy I want to keep an eye on in the future, but I got nothing for this game. Okay. Now, I do want to talk about the Yankees and the Astros. Um, let's see if this is accurate. Uh, Javier going against Carlos Rodon. You know how I feel about Rodon, but I'll, I'll, I'll say it again for the people who are new to the stream. Um, let's see here. Looks like we've got, uh, oh no, I didn't want to look at the splits. Um, the line on this 125, kind of flat Astros, a, a short home favorite against the Yankees. So I woke up and all I kept saying to myself was, man, that was a big win for the Yankees. Again, I know it's one game, but they go down early. They claw back late. The new guy fucking Soto makes a, a highlight play that's going around on Twitter. Um, I think that was a good win for them. To cut to start the season, so I'd be like, you know, I bet a lot of people are going to go back to the Astros here in a bounce back win. Uh, and I, I wanted to say the Yankees would be a team that I would have targeted today until I saw Carlos Rodon pitching. I have not been a Carlos Rodon guy. Um, maybe he gets his shit together. He was not very good when he came to the Yankees last year. I am going to sit and wait on this one. I did lean Yankees initially. Um, who's pitching again? Did I say for the – oh, Christian Javier. The total is nine. I did go over yesterday. I think it was eight and a half. Um, it did go over. I played the first five under like a moron. It went way over. 
Uh, 65% of the bets, 80% of the money are on this over. Uh, Judge did not hit a home run. Um, looks like it opened nine and it's staying pretty flat, a little juice to the over. I would, if anything, probably want to attack the Yankees in some way, shape, or form. But I don't know how to do it. Do you have a play in this game? Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people are going back to the Astros, and I, I kind of agree with them just for baseball reasons. Like, I'm not, a, I used to like Rodon. Like, I was a fan of him, but like last year he looked bad. He looked bad in spring training. And the thing with him is he kind of just relies on two pitches. And the, the Astros are probably one of the best teams against lefties. Like, even Tucker and Jordan, they kill lefties. So we might get a Jordan digger for Trent against Rodon if he throws a fastball. He hits one dead center field like he did against the Phillies, but I'm probably going to go back. I'm probably going to go back to Fade and Judge. He's like 0 for 12 against Javier. Doesn't have good a match against him, so like baseballs, you're always a day late, so I mm. might go back to Judge and Fade him in some way, but I might look to like a first five with the Astros, because like I know initially I liked the Astros bullpen, but like Faison said, they don't have much jet as they did last year. They basically only have Hader and Presley and both of them pitched last year, and Brian Abreu is their best reliever. He's still suspended for this game. So I might look for Astros, just the first five, to back Javier in favor of them, because the Yankees' bullpen is a lot better initially. So I'll probably look to the Astros' first five. Okay. I dig it. Uh, yeah, we've already been talking about a home run parlay, and uh, Stake said he liked Yordan. I can get down with that. Uh, Bert says Pena and Yordan. Um, I think it could be Yordan Day. So let's go. Yordan will probably be in the parlay. We got to pick two more people. Uh, oh, Chewy says over one and a half strikeouts. Um, the D backs and the Rockies. D backs beat the shit out of the Rockies yesterday. I, uh, I don't think I'm going to get involved, but I do see Cal Quantrell up there. Uh, Rockies debut. I wonder if Pete has fucking got the mimosa already poured for this one, kicking his feet up in his little Ugg slippers, probably in his Gramercy apartment. Can't wait for the Contrell debut. Um, I'm not going to get involved with this one. Do you have anything or should we move on? Yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to fade Quantrell in some kind of way. <laughs> Looking one hitter. The only thing I'm worried about is, though, is like, like Stake had the system last year. Anytime a team scored 10 runs, take the under the mm. next game. It hits a lot. So that is a thing that does happen a lot. Once once a team scores like 15 runs, the next game they usually struggle just Mm -hmm. just for baseball reasons. So I'm probably going to look to back Kelly in some way. Like I might fade a hitter. Like I may fade Blackman in some way. But I do want to fade Quantrell. So I'm trying to look for a hitter. I might look for – you took Suarez to hit a home run, right, in your parlay? Uh, That was Stakes pick, yep. (laughs) Expects, yeah. So I might go back to Suarez. Ooh. Oh, so it's like it's always a day late. So I got to look at the matchup a little bit more here. Just the one thing I'm worried about is, yeah. I mean, Carroll is the guy that uh, he's one of my favorite players last year. I hit him for book of the year. Nice. So that's what I always pick. So I don't mind Carroll in some kind of way. But the thing with Quantrell, he usually struggles against righties. So I'm looking at Suarez maybe as a guy the back then, especially if he. He sold his take yesterday. Okay. You know what? I might hop on that train. I don't know that I'm going to do home run, but maybe I'll do over bases. Um, it'll be a little uh, collab with going with you, your read on fading Quantrell, which I'm down to do, and then back to uh, Suarez, who burned the uh, stake yesterday. Um, and then I like that under because you of, of what you mentioned. It's at nine right now. Um, uh, who's going for the D backs? Merrill Kelly's pitching for the D backs. Um, by the way, did I miss a game? Oh no, the Guardians A's is right here. Um, okay, four more games, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. How are we doing on time? 12, 19. It's actually perfect. Um, I I think I have no problem with anybody just squaring up and taking the short price on the Guardians here. Um, I know we talked about this in the season preview with with the Guardians being a team, uh, either them or the Twins, I think, to win that division. The Q picks the Tigers. The Guardians are a team that I respect. I'm not going to – kind of like the Orioles, uh, you know, after they beat my Rays in that uh, in that wild card round. I, I really try to fade them um, as little as possible. So the contrarian me says, wow, it's a short line, short price. But the Guardians just won 8-0. to zero. Like, the A's suck. Um, I think Pete said he's on the A's over wins. So maybe he expects them to be a little bit better than most people. Um, 
I don't know if you plan on getting involved with this game. The total on it after that 8-0 was is 8. It opened juiced under minus 125. It's moved down to 7.5 at DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, pro- likely no play for me on this one. It's, it, is, it should be noted that the bets and the tickets – or the bets and the money is on the over in this. And of course, everybody's on the Guardians. It looks like the freest bet on the board. Do you see any reason to back the A's today? Yeah, I mean, I have no read it in a way. It's like <clears throat> Russ Strothman, and he's a decent pitcher here. And Logan Allen, he's he's decent pitcher here. So, like, I have no read for it. But I mean, I'm not trying to get cute with the A's at the beginning of the year. So, yeah, I agree. Okay, simple enough. Let's keep moving. Um, Mariners and Red Sox. So the Mariners are, uh, they got all the hype this year. And uh, I i actually didn't get there with their win total. I only took the Mets win total, which is weird. I usually take like four to five teams. Um, but I feel like I always have a really good year in win totals and a really bad year. So I went four and one last year. So I was like, fuck it. I'm not going to, I'm just going to go tight on this one and maybe just go in one if the Mets decide to suck. So I, I stayed off the Mariners, but I did play, um, I did play uh, Julio, obviously, as you know, move the market on that one, W. Um, but the Mariners look like the right side yesterday. But you know the Red Sox are just some feisty fuckers. And one thing I did, I like to do with them last year is target them in the first game of a road trip. They would always come out scrappy. So they win. Uh, Devers looked great. Uh, I think he had a home run in, in, in his first at-bat. Could be wrong there. So now Pavetta goes against Kirby, who was Hazen's pick for uh, Cy Young, 11-1. to Um I think I'm going to sit this one out, and if we're looking at the splits here, it looks like uh, money, bets and money on the over. Totals at seven. Yesterday was a high-scoring game, um, so under betters got burned. Let's see. Open seven, a little juice to the over, has not budged, though. It's not going to seven and a half. So I think that's a lot of respect for Kirby and or Pavetta. Uh, Would you get down on backing any of these pitchers today? So this might be a bad up between me and Faison. He's a Kirby guy. I'm a Pavetta guy. Pavetta oh. used to be on the Phillies, and I was like huge on him. But they, it never really worked out here. But then Pavetta was like the best pitcher in the second half last year. Like he went on a crazy run with strikeout wise, and it's kind of like a nerd stuff. But like if you go like by like stuff plus, it like shows how good their pitches are compared to other pitches. He had like the number one stuff plus in the second half. So. And he had a good spring training here, so I might get cute with the Red Sox, the first five, because uh, I don't really trust the bullpen too much, and most of them have been there. So, yeah, Endeavors might hit another donkey off Kirby, so I might look for the Red Sox to back him in some way, or just fade. I might fade Julio, because he doesn't have great numbers against Favetta. But I do like Julio as like an uh, MVP thing. The thing with Julio, he usually struggles out of the beginning of the stretch like last year he had a bad first half and Mm -hmm. he had a great second half so he might be a guy that you want to jump on avp later in the year but i do like julio just probably not this matchup though okay i'll stay off i think it's probably going to be me versus hazen this one like that maybe i'll just get down on the first five under then and and back you're a pavetta guy he's a he's a um kirby guy and that's the way i'll get involved by the way Rafael Devers, it's Devers. Okay, thank you, Fat Girls. I apologize. Hope you agree. De- Devers, got it. Understood. Thank you very much. Um, okay, let's see where we're at here. Two more games, Padres and, and Giants. Got my Padres unit yesterday. Um, I don't know. I mean, Greg likes the Giants. I think Pete likes the Giants. Pete said he was the guy at Just Baseball who liked the Giants. Everybody else liked the Padres. Um, between those two teams in, in terms of the season outlook. I don't know. I'm just not really a Giants guy. Love Snell. Not really a Giants guy outside of that. So I'm not going to be betting on the Giants very much. Got my unit. I'm going to stay out of the, the rest of the series. Joe Musgrove against Kyle Harrison. I never heard of Kyle Harrison in my life. Um, the Padres are, let's take a look. The total was seven and a half up to eight. Um, and let's see on the money line, the Padres, are they minus 150? One, my Open minus 150. Down a little bit at some places, up a little bit at others. So I don't know. I mean, that kind of seems like the right line. Padres minus one fifty-five. Uh, anything you like in this one? Yeah, I think I'm going <clears> to <throat> target the fade a couple of hitters here. I might look to fade either either Chapman or Soler. I'm not a huge fan of either pickup. Like Soler really? came off a career year. Oh, true. He's going. He's coming off to like he kind of goes 
ups and thrillers, and he's going to a, a pitcher's park here in San Fran, so I might look to fade. I'm not a big Chapman fan at all. He's he's a good defender, but it, he goes through huge slumps here, and mm. the guy I want to fade on the Padres here is maybe Machado. He's a guy that if he faces anyone with high velo, he cannot hit a high fastball at all, and Kyle Harrison is one of the best pitching prospects here, and he has a great fastball. So the thing with Machado, he he kills guys that throws like mid low nineties, but anybody that throws like ninety five or ninety seven high up in the zone, he cannot catch up to it here. So I think I'm gonna have to look in the matchup a little bit more over here. But I'm leaning to the under as a whole, and I might fade a couple of hitters in the game. Okay, I respect the fading fading Judge and Machado the same day. I love that. Now you just got to add Otani. Uh, and that's the last game on the board. So we got the Cardinals and the Dodgers. Bobby Miller going. Um, who I mentioned, guy in the cornfields. Uh, I don't know where he's been. He's very corp lately, but uh, he did get to mention to me uh, in the DMs that he he was very anti Bobby Miller last year. Now he's on Bobby Miller as a long shot to win the Cy Young. Minus two twenty five. Zach Thompson. I know the Cardinals got a lot of sharp money uh, to make the playoffs this season. I don't necessarily know that people are are backing their win total or anything like that, or necessarily day to day. Don't know who Zach Thompson is, um, but this should be an interesting one. Uh, Dodgers won yesterday. I think it was like seven to one. All the bets in the money are on the Dodgers. If you look uh, at the splits, it, it it appears to be one of the most lopsided games. Oh no, it, eh, I think the I think the D backs are actually number one. Dodgers number two. A um, little money on that over. Uh, Dodgers went from two fifteen to two twenty five. I don't think I have any interest in getting contrarian or cute and fading them. Total open nine down to eight and a half at Fanduel, but nine everywhere else. Do you back in Bobby Miller? Yeah, I mean, Bobby Miller is a good pitcher here, but I'm probably not going to back him okay. anything today-wise. He's a, at least last year, he was a reverse blitz guy. He really did well against lefties, but the Cardinals lineup is very right-handed heavy. So he might struggle today in some aspect here against Goldie and Arenado and Jordan Walker in some aspect. And I might bag a hitter for the Dodgers here. I'm looking maybe at the Oscar. He, he kills lefties really well. So if they have him hitting fourth or fifth, I might look to back him in some way, but it was kind of interesting. I was looking at the odds for some of the Dodgers hitters, and they have they have Otani and they have Freeman at plus money for total bases, which I kind of found weird after they came off and done really well. It kind of makes a little bit of sense because they're going against the lefty, but it's kind of weird that they have the Dodgers, two best hitters, top lineup at plus money is here. So I think I might look to back some of the right-handed bats here. They're either Mookie or T. Oscar. One of those guys, but I don't really have a read on the game itself. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Phils, thank you for running through the board, man. Um, it's uh, it's very helpful to get somebody who knows uh, the players, the matchups, etc. Especially this early in the season uh, with a guy like me who doesn't know diddly squat. Um, but like I said, I fucking love betting on baseball. I love following baseball. Uh, so I, uh, look forward to following you, everybody, if, uh, at Phil Zutley, this is your at right on Twitter. Yeah, that's my Twitter. And I'm, I mainly stick to props much that cause I'm not the best on side in totals, but I'm trying to get a little bit different here. Like I might take a hitter to get a hit. And then like the Dodgers money line, I took Freeman to get a hit and I took Dodgers money line to reduce the juice. So I'm trying to like, look for ways to incorporate props into the game total itself to kind of like lower the juice or get better odds for that way. Love it. Uh, yeah, big fan of the player props and shit that you put up to. I am terrible at player props, uh, but I do, again, I do love betting on them. So I, uh, it's, uh, it's probably something that I don't foresee stopping anytime soon. All right, man. Well, thank you. I'm going to shut it down here. Uh, appreciate your time and good luck today. Yeah. Just, you might want to, what futures did you put for lag? Cause I don't want you to take them every day. So. I'm not, I bet him, I bet him to have the most home runs. Uh, we're off to yeah, a good start. <laughs> Yeah, the thing with Vlad is I looked at him this year. He lost a lot of weight in spring yes. training. So, and then he kind of changed his batting stance a little bit different. And last year, he was the most unluckiest hitter last year. He, we look at like baseball savant, they show like expected batting average against his batting average. Mm-hmm. He's supposed to hit 300, but he only hit like 260. So, like his batting average was different. So, usually that expected tablet is, does make a difference here because. Trent's probably getting ready for his show and all that shit. But the guy that had the difference for the most difference for expected slugging and the most expected slugging was J Ram. 
So I had a feeling here that he was going to have a shitty year, and I tried to talk Trent out of it here, but he still went with it. So, so I put Vlad. I took him for MVP. So like, hopefully, like he bounces back because AO is kind of wide open this year with no Otani. So if Judge gets hurt, that kind of opens up the field like that. And the kind of the thing I want to look at is for guys that can't take away from the other team, like Julio. Mm-hmm. No one in the Mariners lineup that can take away from Julio. You look at the Blue Jays lineup here. Bichette's not going to steal any MVP votes. Springer's not going to steal MVP votes. So you kind of want to look for one guy on a good team if they carries them. Mm-hmm. But you don't got to worry about taking votes from other guys. Like Soto and Judge are going to take votes from each other here. So I kind of look for hitters that are going to be the best hitter on the team. Kind of just go from there. Uh, all right. Well, that's good to know. It makes me feel better that you're uh, pro v- Vlad as well. Um, I, I I doubt that he's going to get the most, but I still – I did it because I don't have to bet it every game. So pro- probably save me money, although it would have been nice to come out with a bang on that first game. Um, and then just real quick, uh, 60 seconds, and then I got to wrap it up. You got any win totals on the year or, or World Series bets? Anybody that you're highest on or you feel most uh, confident in? Yeah, I'm, I'm back in the Tigers about big okay. time here. Scoobles, my main guy. I got him for a Cy Young, and he started off the season well. Yep, sure um, did. Uh, the Astros are like my pick for the AL. They might struggle a little bit, so I might try to double up on them because I, I took them to win the division last year, late in the year, and that I'm pretty sure that I cashed there. So they have left some guys are going to return from injury here, like Luis Garcia, Verlander is going to return. McLanders by term return. They more likely they'll probably pitch up a pitcher at the deadline. So uh any team that starts struggle here, like the Phillies, they'll probably struggle. I'll probably look them to get them for a good price to make the playoffs and then the Astros. I might look for them the back late in the year. So there's are probably two teams on my own. Later in the year, the Tigers and the Astros. Good shit. All right. Well, I know uh I didn't end up taking them. I took Torkelson over home runs, but I know uh Stake and Greg have uh, scoop all Cy Young as well and Tigers win total. So happy, uh, happy to hear you say that. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Phils. We'll have you on again soon. Uh, I'll be in your DM seeing when you're available next. And uh, good luck this year. Um, good luck, guys. All right. Peace. Um, mods. Uh, all right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, great, great crowd today. Good contributions. Good luck on the uh on your bets tonight oh 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 oh, oh. squad potter swirly son of a bitch all right i do have to go i'm getting fucking hammered left and right here with emails um i got like four people i haven't responded to and i need to respond to them okay let's do it let's do it let's do it squad pot squad pot squad but everybody lock in then i'll send you over to uh behind the lines <sighs> talk to me ladies and gents talk to me ladies and gents all right here's what i'm thinking here's what i'm thinking i can't make the raise I, we can't make the raise first five under squad pod we can't um how about the, okay here's what we're gonna do we're gonna do i like the red sox mariners first five under red sox mariners first five under okay uh manage pole manage pole manage pole new pole squad pod by the way squad pod's 12 and 4 no big deal squad pod um red sox mariners First five under. Don't know what it is. Don't know what it is. Don't have time to look. Apologies. Uh, and then let's go to college basketball. We're going to go with. All right. I mean, what do you guys like? No, 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 no. 12 and four, you say. Indeed. Yep. We were nine and four, and then I stopped making the gra- graphics, and we won three straight. Um, Give me some, give me some, give me some bets. NC State? No. Maybe first half. NC State first half. And NC State first half. Not not the game. No, not Purdue. No. Oh, how about that under? How about that under? How about that under? We're gonna go Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Purdue. Under 155. Love that. Oh, let's go. Creighton. 10 over 144. And has to be the raise under. I think no, because that's my POD. Well, Cam stole it, so now it's it's my uh, just a play, just somebody that I used to know. 
<laughs> NC State team total under? No. How about Duke team total under? Okay, here we go. One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Go vote, go, 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 go vote. Wife is on a corp call. She just started. Uh, I got emails. I got people calling me. Not that I'm that important or anything, but uh, Braves champs of the new fall 25 minutes ago. By the way, W. Phils, thank you so much for uh, for hopping on. Love hearing Phils talk ball. Motherfucker knows his shit. All right, go vote, go vote, go vote, go vote, go vote. I'm going to. I'm I'm gonna vote Red Sox. I'm gonna vote Red Sox under. I like that one. It's cheeky. Oh, it's tight right now. Four three two one. Four three two one. What do we like? What do we like? What do we know? What do we like? Go vote, motherfuckers. It says there's 88 fucking people in here, and there's 12 votes. What are you doing if you're not voting? It's all anonymous. Now I get why Krabs has Krabs has to do this shit. Go 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 go. Come on. Now I get it. You gotta fucking tell these motherfuckers what to do. 15 votes now. 15 votes in 5 5 dead heat right now. Nope. 6 5. 6 5. 10 seconds left. 10 seconds left. 6 6. Red Sox and Creighton. Red Sox and Creighton over. Red Sox under Creighton over. Ooh, Creighton over. Creighton over taking the lead. It's the Creighton motherfucking over. 70 people in here. We got 20 votes. You guys are fucking worthless. Just kidding. Love y'all. Um, all right. Creighton over is indeed the squad pod. Bang, bang, bang. 12 and 4. We've won three straight. Uh, are we going to get a parlay? We're going to get a home run parlay. I got to go. I got to find a guy and then give it the stake. Um, good luck, everybody. All right. Good luck. Purdue under maybe a whale now. Yep. Purdue under was the least voted. Da, 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 da. I'm, I'm going to be on it. I'm going to be on it. All right. I'm going to send you over to – let's get you over to Behind the Lines. Raid, book it, sports. Wait, are they live? They got to be live. Every time I fucking um, – every time I fucking uh, send them over, these motherfuckers aren't live. These motherfuckers aren't live. All right, W Raid, W Raid, join the raid. I'll check you guys. Have a great weekend. I forgot today's Friday. W's, have a great weekend. Uh, good luck on all your bets. I'll chat with you later. Peace.